We know that someone visited San Antonio that had the measles. That means likely the measles are spreading in our community right now. Dr. Jason Bowling from University Health and Infectious Disease Expert. He oversees the hospital's epidemiology team. He joins us now live on Q&A. Yeah, we appreciate you being here. We've been talking a lot about this West Texas outbreak that happened largely among unvaccinated people. We know that Bear County has a 94% vaccination rate, which we're going to break down in just a second. So if you are vaccinated for the measles, what does this outbreak mean to you? What kind of risk is there if you have that protection already? Sure. The good news is that the measles vaccine is very effective and very, very durable, meaning that if you've had two recommended doses of that measles vaccine, it's understood that it gives you lifelong protection and two doses will get you to 97 percent protection. So people that are vaccinated should feel comfortable that they're pretty well protected with the vaccine. I want to start from the basics too. like what what if you have the measles, what does that mean and how highly transferable is the measles virus? Sure. So the, the measles can cause pretty severe illness. Starts off with kind of re respiratory symptoms. People have cough, runny, runny nose, itchy, watery eyes, and then they develop this characteristic rash that starts from the head, moves to the body, arms, and legs. Very transmissible. Um, for people that are not vaccinated, that haven't received the doses, if you had 100 people in a room, 90% of those people would get fat measles if they were exposed to somebody that had measles infection. And it could linger in the room for two hours after somebody leaves. And so there's that concern that there's not only is it transmissible, but it can sit around for a while too. So you can be exposed without even knowing it. So obviously it's characterized by that rash we were just showing pictures of. Can it be more serious than that? I mean, that rash is gonna go away over time, right? But can there be more serious complications? It can cause more serious complications. So about one in five people that gets measles infection will end up in the hospital. You can get complications like diarrhea, pneumonia, and in some cases it's less common, but about one in thousand people can have measles actually infect their brain, their spinal cord, their central nervous system, causing encephalitis, meningitis type of picture. What, as an epidemiologist, when you first heard about this case in San Antonio, in Bear County, what was your reaction? So at that point, you always want to know how well are we vaccinated, right? Because that's really our wall of protection for ongoing transmission from person to person. The more people we have that are fully vaccinated, the less likely we're going to see that transmission from person to person and spread further in our community. So we mentioned that earlier, the 94% vaccination rate, according to Metro Health. Where is that number coming from? So when we look at vaccine rates, we really want to see that we have enough herd immunity, our immunity in our community, that we can protect people that might not be able to get the vaccine, which is a small number of people, or some people that are immunocompromised that may not respond to the vaccine. And so that magic number is right around 95%. So we're just below that. We'd like to see 95% or higher to have the best protection for those people that can't get the vaccine. So it says, so we're at 94%. Where is that number coming from? I mean, I, because one of the questions I'm going to ask is how do you check your vaccination status? So where are we getting the 94% figure from? So we're, we're getting that number from the uptake rate for ch students that are entering school, children okay. that are entering school to begin with, there's requirements to get those vaccines. And so that's where we get those statistics. Yeah, that's where we're at the 94% and that's where the number comes from kids mostly. Correct. Yeah. So we're over that 90% threshold, give or take, right? So if you are vaccinated, can you still be infected? Can you still actually get measles? Right, so the vaccine is not 100%. It's very effective, but it's about 97% if you get two doses, which means that 3% of people still could get infected. But people that have been fully vaccinated and get infected with measles tend to have a milder course of illness, and they're less transmissible to others as well. Kind of like the flu. If you get the flu shot, but you get the flu, it's going to be less severe, hopefully, than, than if you didn't get it. That's right. You're going to blunt that severity of illness. How do you check your vaccination status if you wonder if you've ever been vaccinated for measles? So most people are going to have to look back in their records to see if they have the records of being vaccinated or not. You know, now there's an electronic registry that, killed, that children are being vaccinated. They have those entered in, so there's an electronic database that they can check. You could check with your doctor to see if maybe you've shared that information with them before in the past. Yeah. So let's talk about those symptoms. We showed pictures of the rash earlier. What else comes along with measles? A lot of people have really high fevers, characteristic of it. Um, more common complications, diarrhea can happen. Um, people can get secondary bacterial infections. They can get pneumonia with measles, but they can also get bacterial infections like sinusitis or ear infections in children. What are, what are some of the precautions to take personally if you're afraid that you're gonna get measles? I mean, and, and go through the list of people who are especially susceptible to measles. 
People we worry about with measles outbreaks are people that are immunocompromised, they're going to be at higher risk for severe complications, and then pregnant women, unfortunately, are at higher risk as well. Um, you, if you're not vaccinated, you can't get vaccinated while you're pregnant because it is a weakened live vaccine, similar uh, for people that are severely immunocompromised. What, do, what are some of the precautions that people should take, no matter what status? I mean, this really affects everyone in one way or another. What would you recommend people do to make sure they don't get the measles or try to ensure they don't get the measles. Sure. So importantly for anybody that can get vaccinated, make sure you're up to date. Make sure you've had both of the recommended doses. Uh, people should be informed. So they should be aware if they're going to be traveling somewhere, they should look to see if there's a measles outbreak. This is not a great time to go travel to maybe the northern panhandle right now of Texas. If you're at high risk, you haven't been vaccinated. But if you're traveling abroad or other places, there's other areas where there might be measles outbreaks. Good hand hygiene and people that are ill should stay home. If you think that you have, may have measles because you have these symptoms, you should call your provider, um, not go to work or school, so you can also try and protect other people from getting sick. Wearing a mask? Wearing a mask can help protect um, from transmitting those, those droplets, so wearing a mask can be protective. Droplets are mostly airborne, correct? That's what we're talking about. That's correct. We're talking about the airborne droplets that people spread when they cough and sneeze if they're infected with measles. Yeah. When do you get fully vaccinated, especially for people who have young children or, you know, going through all of that right now? When do you get the first dose? When do you get the second? Sure. The first dose is generally at 12 months or one year of age, and then the second dose is age four to six is where they usually get that second dose. What's the difference in, sorry Go ahead. to cut you off, what's the difference in this and chicken pox? I remember when I was a kid, there, there wasn't a vaccine for that. We kind of all got it. So, you know, that's characterized by that red rash, similar there. But are there stark differences between the measles and chickenpox? There are some differences. And as you said, the chickenpox vaccine came out much later. Um, so a lot of us did not have the chickenpox vaccine. The measles vaccine came out in 1963. So we have decades of monitoring it, know that it's a very tolerate, well-tolerated vaccine. But measles is known for causing some severe illness in some people. And in the 1960s, before the vaccine was available, there were about 3 million cases of measles per year, mostly in children less than 15 years of age. There are about 48,000 hospitalizations each year and about 500 deaths. So it did have a big toll for people having more severe disease. And then some people can have this meningitis that can have long-term uh, consequences, long-term neurologic sequelae or side effects from, from that infection. Is it similar to chicken pox or, they, or not? I mean, it, it, like with the rash, like Myra said, you kind of think it, you kind of, a lot of people think of it in the same way. They do. They're both febrile rash illnesses. They're both really transmissible. Uh, the, the vesicles, the rash with uh, chicken pox looks more like fluid filled blisters. Okay. The rash for measles tends to be this flatter red brown rash that can merge together into big patches. You touched on a little bit the history of measles. We have not heard about measles, it seems like to me, in a long time, except for the last few years. What, why are we hearing about it now? Is it, is it, are, I mean, obviously there's more of an outbreak now than there were, say, 20 years ago. We're seeing some uptick in little outbreaks in pockets of areas of the United States where people are less vaccinated. So we had elimination of measles status in about 2,000 in the United States, but we're always at risk of losing that. It takes ongoing surveillance to make sure that we're getting people vaccinated and, and then making sure those vaccine numbers don't drop below that 95% where we worry about you know, herd immunity or protecting our community. Yeah. So 2,000, there wasn't measles in the United States. That's right. We, were, we had eliminated measles we reached it wasn't eliminated throughout the world so it wasn't eradicated but it was eliminated in the united states and now what we're seeing is some little pockets where someone travels somewhere where there's measles activity they come back to a community that has lower vaccine rates and then you see an, out an outbreak develop so it's still out there and, and circulating and it sounds like the vaccine you're saying is the best option for defense it's the best option it's two doses and it's lifelong so you don't have to keep repeating it every year um, very well tolerated again we have over 50 years of experience with it yeah no need to get boosters no need to get boosters yeah great dr bowling thanks for being here we appreciate it thank you for having me yeah